All right, guys, so welcome back to Life by the Bow. It's been a little while since I've started a video this way. However, the reason why is because I'm making an informational video for you guys based on crossing over to the Bahamas. It's that time of year, things are warming up, the weather pretty soon here is gonna start calming down, and a lot of us are going to be going back and forth from the Bahamas, and some of us may wanna go for our first time. So basically what I'm gonna try to do in this actual video is give you guys as many tips and tricks as possible. I'm gonna try my best to include absolutely everything. I may miss a couple things, so throughout the video, if you guys notice that I missed something that may be very important, go ahead and write it down in the comment section below so we can just create a nice little platform where people can just come for information based on crossing to and from the Bahamas. Now, at this point, before we go any further, I just wanna thank Truebill for sponsoring this week's video. However, when crossing to the Bahamas by boat or just going to the Bahamas, period, the first thing I suggest, guys, before you even start doing anything as far as preparing your boat is go get tested for COVID-19. Now, what we took was a PCR test. That's what they are requiring. So we went ahead, we got our PCR test. First and foremost, they came back negative. If you come back positive, you simply cannot go to the Bahamas. So you have to have a negative test. After you get that negative test, that negative test has to be within three days of arrival. So we are arriving on Thursday, we got tested on Monday. That is the bare minimum. We left as much room in between our test date and our actual time of arrival just because the steps that we're taking sometimes take a bit of time. So get tested as soon as you possibly can while you're within that three day window. So we got our negative test on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, the next step that we had to do was apply for a Bahamian health visa. Now, I don't know why my health visa was $40. Other people in our crew, their health visa was $60. So it kind of varies between that range. So when you go to apply for the health visa, I'm gonna have the link down in the description below. You're gonna upload your negative COVID test. You're just gonna put in a bunch of details based on your trip and immediately it's going to process. It's not going to be accepted. There are a few details that I'm assuming the Bahamian government has to go over in order for them to approve you. To approve you, it could be as fast as five minutes or it could take as long as two days. That's why I'm saying try to do all of this as soon as possible. It never typically takes any longer than a day, but you wanna make sure the day that you're leaving, you're not waiting on your actual health visa to be approved. So. Like I said, do as much as you possibly can while you can. So we got our negative tests so far, we got our health visas so far, and once we're approved, everything looks good. This is a very obvious one. This is something that you should have before you ever even started the process. You can't even apply for a health visa unless you have a passport. We have those and we make sure, at least for me, I'm the captain of the boat, I make sure I have everybody's passports, health visas, negative COVID test in my hands before I even leave the dock. Because if you get over there and you don't have the documents, you don't have the passports, you gotta come back and that is never going to be any fun. So make sure you have everybody's passports. Now, another thing that I have here is immigration cards and you can't get these until you actually arrive in the Bahamas. However, after every Bahamas trip, I take back immigration cards with me because I fill these out beforehand. So that way, once I actually get to the Bahamas, all I do is step off of the boat and hand these immigration cards to immigration just to speed up the process. Now, if it's your first time, you're gonna have to go up to the dock master and grab these, come back to the boat and hand them out to everybody and they need to fill these out along with passports in order to clear everybody over into the Bahamas. So this is pretty simple. Something that I suggest, bring a couple pens with you. Bring as many pens as there are people in your boat so that way everybody can fill everything out at the same time to save as much time as possible because this process does take some time. Now, something that I did, I purchased my cruising permit on the internet rather than purchasing it in the Bahamas. Now, there are some pros and cons to purchasing your cruising permit on the internet versus purchasing it 
once you actually get to the Bahamas. If you decide to purchase it in the Bahamas, it's going to take a little more time and things typically go a little more smooth. And the reason why I say so is because purchasing the cruising permit on the internet through the Bahamian government's website is very, very confusing. And if you are not tech savvy, you will spend so much time upset pulling your hair out because it's very hard to understand. I don't wanna discourage anybody about the cruising permit because you know it definitely is nice to have it done beforehand, but if you're an older guy and you're not good with computers, I do not suggest doing it on the internet. So I just wanna put that little disclaimer out there just to help everybody out as best as possible. Now, something that is probably the most important thing over absolutely everything when it comes to actually doing one of these trips is fuel. That is where you can probably rack up the cost of the trip very easily and very quickly. But like I mentioned, this video is sponsored by Truebill and our sponsors really help out when it comes to making these trips possible. Now, Truebill is a personal finance app that we're extremely thankful for since they're an existing sponsor here on Life by the Bow. And if you guys remember back in January, we made the New Year's resolution to scale Life by the Bow. However, a wrench was quickly thrown into our plans with the current price of fuel. Therefore, we have to pay a little more attention to what we spend, which can be accomplished through the budget feature on the app. Truebill will monitor your spending by category, which you'll then get notifications for when a certain budget has been exceeded. So, in our case, we know that we use X amount of dollars on fuel, tackle, etc. So, another great feature in the app is the smart savings account. By using this, you can choose a certain amount that automatically deposits into a savings account at a desired frequency that you can withdraw from at any time if you need to. Now, we're extremely appreciative of them, like we said, because they're truly what make these videos come together in the manner they do. So, if Truebill is something that you guys think you guys would be interested in, go ahead, click the link down in the description and try it out for free. But, like we were saying originally about fuel, it's something to never be forgotten about and you should always be thinking about fuel in the back of your head. This 39 contender right here has a 500 gallon fuel capacity and on average it'll get about a mile per gallon. However, when you're loaded down, you got the trim tabs down, you're cutting through heavy seas, you always want to make sure to bring more than you need. So therefore, the trip that we're doing, we're more than likely not going to burn all 500 gallons, but we're going to fill this boat up to the brim because fuel may not always be readily accessible in the Bahamas. You should keep this in mind, especially if you're doing an island hopping trip. Before you leave from one island to go to the next, you should always refuel at every single island that has fuel, especially in times like today, things are crazy. Now, another thing to keep in mind is, you know, you could have a brand new boat just like this and you may think that you're in the clear and you're gonna run around the Bahamas not have any issues, but water and fuel is kind of an issue over in the Bahamas and it does happen from time to time. I'm not gonna say it happens all the time, but that is something to be aware of. So with that being said, you wanna make sure to bring over as much as you possibly can. And what I mean is ice, food, drinks, tackle, bait, whatever it may be, because a lot of these things are not readily accessible in the Bahamas. Therefore, take as much as you need. However, we wanna make sure that we're not bringing too much, and this goes for everything. This goes for food, this goes for ice, this goes for luggage, whatever we may be bringing over. We wanna make sure that we only bring what we need. You see, when you're bringing too much and your boat's loaded down, it's going to negatively affect handling, it's going to reduce your fuel economy, and it's going to reduce your performance. Now, moving along in terms of actually loading your boat, I've talked about this in other videos before, and there actually is an art to loading your boat. This contender here, right here, it's a very well-balanced boat, so therefore, we always make sure to distribute weight evenly amongst the boat. You don't wanna have too much weight up front, reason why is because you don't want your bow to be sinking through all the waves you want that boat to be able to get up on top of the water and perform the way it needs to perform however at the same exact time 
We want to make sure that we don't put too much here in the rear. The reason why is because we don't want the boat to sit really heavy while it's running through the waves because the bow will not be able to slice through the waves as the boat is designed and intended to run. So therefore we distribute that weight evenly, pointing in, going through the waves, slicing the water, shifting everything out and back in a way. So you don't want your boat to be sitting heavy in the back because then it's just gonna bounce and hit on top of the waves. You want it to be nice and flat so it can cut through nice and easy. So you're pretty much ready to go. Really something that you should have been paying attention to days before when you actually started the COVID testing was weather. And we have a couple rules of thumb whenever we are crossing over to the Bahamas. And this may vary depending on experience and each captain. A 10, 10 knots of wind is typically a pretty fair crossing. We will cross in winds over 10 knots, 15 knots, sometimes we'll cross in up to 20 or 25 if needed. However, if it's gonna be blowing all weekend, we just won't even go. However, you know, you may have a group of guys or guys and girls together that you guys have been planning this for a year and you only got one time to go and you wanna go. Now, previously we had a 30 foot contender and our rule of thumb with that boat was around 15 knots. However, we did also find ourselves crossing in winds up to 20 knots, sometimes even 25. And we learned our lesson through that. We got over there safely without a problem just because these boats specifically, they're very seaworthy. However, if you are a first time boater and it is your first time crossing to the Bahamas, I would not cross in anything over 15 knots, but that's a big reason why people go on these Bahamas trips in the summertime, not only because the weather is warmer, but just simply just because we typically have better weather windows. You know, a lot of the times we can find those days where the wind is going to be five to 10 knots and that is the perfect weather. That is when you want to go. But like I said, take everything with a grain of salt. Every captain is different. Every condition is different. And Something to keep in mind too is wind direction actually does play a pretty big role in your crossing as well. You know, between Florida and the Bahamas, we have what's called the Gulf Stream Current. The Gulf Stream Current flows to the north. So best case scenario, you have a south wind. That wind is traveling in the same direction as the current, and that is going to give you the most calm sea as possible. However, on the other hand, if that Gulf Stream current, as it always does, flows towards the north and you have a north wind, the current and the wind are gonna be counteracting and you're gonna get some pretty heavy swells. So as those wind speeds start to increase, keep in mind what I just told you. But if you're below 10 knots or you're around 10 knots, you don't have to pay so much attention to the actual wind direction. But before you go, just one last time, Take a look at your radar. Take a look at the weather. Just make sure that there's no storms out there. Understand that when you're on the ocean, your boat is the highest point in the water. So you're very prone to potentially getting struck by lightning. Will it happen? Maybe, maybe not, but it's always best to not get caught in those situations. And just also understand storms will increase wind speeds. Therefore, it will increase the wave heights. So you don't wanna mess around with storms. They can definitely burden your Bahamas crossing. Now on this boat specifically, we have an open array radar where we can track storms. However, once you get offshore, you don't have cell phone service. So simply checking your phone for the radar will not work. Keep that in mind. A couple other things that we have before we cross. Of course, we have our VHF radio that's built into the boat where we can contact Coast Guard if needed. We also have a satellite communication device and we also have an EPIRB just to be safe. But right now we're on our way to the Bahamas. We're cruising, the boat's on autopilot. Everything at this point is fantastic. Once you actually get into Bahamian waters, go ahead, pull off the throttles, put the boat in neutral real quick. And what you wanna do is you wanna fly your yellow quarantine flag. This is required by the Bahamian government and it basically lets them know, hey, this boat's coming in to clear customs. We're on our way. If we do get stopped, just understand we are not cleared into the Bahamas yet. Once you actually get to the Bahamas, you're going to go to the nearest port that has immigration and customs. 
In our case, we're showing up in Bimini, and in Bimini, they have the Big Game Club, which has its own customs, and then down the road from there is immigration. Only the captain is allowed to get off the boat, like I said earlier, so the captain's gonna go ahead, get off, acquire all the paperwork. If you don't already have it, bring it back to the boat, have everybody fill it out, and then after that, still, the captain is only allowed to get off the boat. You're gonna wanna go to immigration first, clear there, and then after that, go to customs and purchase your cruising permit. Now, your cruising permit and your fishing permit does come together. Once you've done those two steps between customs and immigration, you're good to go. You are officially cleared in the Bahamas. Before you head out, make sure that you take down the yellow quarantine flag and you're flying the Bahamian courtesy flag. And at this point, you are officially good to go in the Bahamas. Make sure before you leave, you clear out with Bahamian Customs. They're cracking down on it. They want you to clear out of the country before you actually leave. I believe if you don't, it could be up to a $5,000 fine. But that basically wraps it up right there, guys. I wanna thank you all so much for tuning in and watching this video. Like I said, if there's certain things that I missed or you may wanna add, Drop it down in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate that. All right, guys, thanks so much.